Welcome to the She Is podcast by Refuge City Church. We are here to have a Bible-based conversation about who you are in Christ. Yay! Hello, good people! (laughs) Hello, ladies and gentlemen and children and animals alike. Hello! Maybe animals animals join us? Maybe you have a dog in the room. Oh, great. I was going to be like, do they have plausible thumbs to start a podcast? Or a phone. They have people for that. Oh, right. Did you just say plausible thumbs? Plausible? Opposable? Opposable. Thumbs? Okay. <laughs> like, wait, have I been plausible? saying it wrong this whole time? <laughs> anyway, if you're sorry, like, I may have mumbled it a little bit. But, <laughs> or if you're like Amanda, when you're doing a puzzle or reading, the cat is right there. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it could be, could be a kitty joining. I, mm-hmm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Either way, we are so glad that you're here. <laughs> All of you. All of you. All of you. Please don't turn us off. We're really glad you're here. Please. Hold on. It gets better. <laughs> so today, um, we have we have fun. We have yes, fun on the we agenda. Do. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm really curious to see what Hannah has oh, for us. I'm just smiling because I like to smile. Okay. Smiling's my favorite. And yeah. I- yeah. And, and she has gum. And I have gum. <laughs> right, right. Okay, that's fine. Sorry. Sorry. fine. I'm so sorry. I so, didn't mean to actually do that. So <laughs> our impulsive, what is that? Is impulsive that our chewing? prefrontal cortex? Which part of our brain do the cats not have developed? The frontal <laughs> lobe. The frontal lobe the front- usually is not developed until later in life. Wow. Usually in your 20s. Regardless. The <laughs> things that help us with our impulse control. Sometimes it's not impulsing. I mean, it's not... <laughs> Mine, mine is almost fully developed because I'm 27 mm-hmm. and I'm almost 28. So by 28, I should be good. Well, I'm older than 28. <laughs> is that the line? It's not. Yeah, they, well, they say <laughs> that mine's that, broken. That, oh, no. That's I for guys. That. I should already have mine developed. I passed that. They say girls' frontal lobes are usually fully developed by 25 and guys are by 27. So I... Just kidding. I should already have mine fully developed. Okay. Well, I know. Congratulations, I Hannah. Thank you. Thank, and you guys, too. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, should. Good. You <laughs> should is the operative word there. Um, regardless. Okay, so the funsies <laughs> is coming from Hannah. This, this wasn't it. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just you wait. Yeah. <laughs> you may have thought it was, but <laughs> tricks on you. Tricks um, on you. <laughs> but then Jamie is bringing the word. Woo-hoo. Many. That, that will grow Many our brain, Many. not trick it. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> anyway. Am I here to trick your brain with funsies? Hopefully. Yeah. Okay. We'll I see. am. You're correct. Oh. <laughs> it is. I'm excited. Trivia day. Oh, oh. I love trivia oh. day. <laughs> yeah. So, um, we've done tons of different types of trivia. Random trivia, mm-hmm. trivia, Christmas trivia. Yeah. But it's not Christmas right now. <laughs> so, Ben, I've done that. Found trivia. I hope you all are good at your U.S. geography. Oh. Oh dear. Not if so you good. didn't say that, Jamie gave a not so great face. And I don't really know Amanda's face that she gave. Well, I, my brain was like, you teach this. You should know this. And my brain was like, you teach this. You should know this. <laughs> it's a smiling. Yeah. yeah. It's so, no. I'm just going to go through and <laughs> I'm just going to observe. And, and we'll see. You never know. You Maybe. Might, you might know a lot Maybe. of these and you might not. Okay. So. It's whoever wants to guess, just guess. Mm, and guess okay. if you want to hit the table and buzz in or whatever. Herbert, you and I are together in this. Here. There you go. Okay. Herbert. We'll start. Maybe this will be an easy one. Okay. 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 So, uh, which state has the longest river in it? Mississippi. No. Colorado. That's what I was going to say. No. Oregon. No. Mm. Well, Washington. I'll just no. go through all of the states. <laughs> It is the Mississippi River, though. Yeah, but... I know, but I think with the way that Mississippi runs, it's actually a shorter... But a bunch of states have Mississippi River in it. Yes. So that's where I'm confused. Is it like the most of the Mississippi? Or the largest portion owned by one state? It's the longest river in the USA. So it's got... So what was the question? (laughs) Which is the longest river in the USA? (laughs) No, which state... It's U.S. geography, oh, okay. but it is right? a state. Oh. The river. Mississippi. No. Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah. Missouri. Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. I don't know. I'm still, don't, I'm like, is it, I'm still confused by the question, but okay. <laughs> well, I think I'll it's because it. the Mississippi runs that way, doesn't it? 
I'm pretty certain Mississippi River goes so this just, way. So it's just it's just saying which is the longest river in the USA. And I thought the it was the Mississippi, was Missouri. but it's oh. Missouri. Okay, just kidding. Well, Maybe yeah, that's I thought the river with the most mess in somewhere. It. I thought it went from like all the way like you know through. What? We're gonna have we're gonna See, have to look some stuff up. I don't. You know what? So, I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> There's the truth. Here. We're all desiring. <laughs> well, if you're a listener and you do care, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> it's just not one of my passions. Okay, good word. <laughs> okay. You wouldn't know it from me passionately answering. But <laughs> all right, here's the next one. Idaho has borders with how many other states? Four? No. Five? No. Six? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for paving the way. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm here for you. <laughs> oh. Two, three. So it would be Four. Oregon, Washington, Five, Montana, uh-huh. whatever's on the east side. I'm guessing like South Dakota? And something else, I see. I don't know. This is a lot of stuff. So it's yeah, Washington, Utah is in there. Oregon, Oregon, Wyoming. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there's a little. Oh yeah, it's got the top top line. So Mm -hmm. one, two, three: California, Nevada, Colorado. I don't think California is. Does it touch California? I don't think it touches California. I don't know. Utah. No, we need a map. Yeah, Amanda's. (laughs) She's looking into it currently. Wyoming. Washington, Oregon, Nevada. Oh, I could order Colorado, one on and the one um, right here. Isn't it? Yeah, Montana, so it be Montana, Wyoming, Utah, oh, yeah. Nevada, Oregon, Washington. Okay. Wow. Okay. Very good. Oh, phew. Now we, we are all a close. little bit smarter. <laughs> <laughs> For okay. now, until it falls out. <laughs> <laughs> until it gets pushed out by something else. By yeah. something else. Which U.S. state is nicknamed the Mount Rushmore state? South Dakota. Correct. I've been there. Yeah. Where's Mount Rushmore? There you go. <laughs> yeah, if you know where that is, then you're doing great. <laughs> um, which of these U.S. states is the largest? Texas. No. Alaska. Is this multiple joints? No. Uh, no you joints? Just... Did I say joints? I know. I thought you said <laughs> of these. Yeah. So yeah, I was waiting I for options. It was a, mm-hmm. Oh. I'm confused. Okay, I'll give you some options. Options. Alaska. Alaska. I thought, yeah, Alaska so and like Texas, Texas is the largest, right? Yeah. Well, I In think Alaska is actually bigger. Oh. I think so. Oh. But, it, but the way In that it's positioned United on the map, States. you can't tell. Right. Because they shrink it down to put it in the bottom corner. Okay. Board. Well, I would agree with Alaska, but this says California. What? I know, right? Wow. Are they talking I, yeah. population? <laughs> we're we're going to land just area. Right it right just now. says largest. These are confusing. Yeah, right. I know. We we got a little. Well, then I, is it we lower forty eight? Yeah, because Alaska, Alaska is the biggest. But if they're talking lower forty eight, but it is more than double the size of the second largest, which is Texas, and four hundred times the size of the smallest, which is Rhode Island. <laughs> so California is not in there anyway. Oh, but, then but I, I'm going to tell these people. Right. They're not I'm going to write nerds. a very strongly worded letter <laughs> to your editor. Yeah, I mean, tell you all about it. It does say that you've got Alaska, Texas, California. So okay. maybe it's just worded. I would say if one of our listeners has some intel for us that would educate us, if you live in come Alaska, come forth and <laughs> educate. Yeah, educate, educate us. us. Please yeah. educate Send us. Send us a little a little mm-hmm. email or a, a comment mm-hmm. somewhere mm-hmm. and. And we will acknowledge that and, and be better for it. Mm-hmm. I missed all of what you just said. Sorry, I was looking at it's another okay. question to read. She's reading. You're keeping ahead, yeah. Oh, man. Okay, this one's not really geography related. I don't know why it's in here. It's more um, nature slash um, Earth phenomenons. <laughs> <laughs> that word's in here. That's is what. it believe it or not? Or? No, it's so what is the natural phenomenon known as a Chinook? Oh, isn't it? It's some like it's winds. There's Chinook winds. Yes. Is it wind? It yes. is. Yes, it's the Chinook winds. Look at you. I'm I was better like, at this than I thought. It's, <laughs> and right. it's really not all geography. It's just okay. random. I was like, it's this is more just random than anything. All right. Where does the U.S. rank in the world by population? 
Oh. Oh. <laughs> Our faces were like, oh. <laughs> no. Oh. I, I don't think we're I, very high I up there. I don't think we I are. Think so I think we're eight or ten. Yeah, I don't know. Are we in the top ten? Twenty-six. Yes, we are in the top ten. Okay. okay. Just we're okay, so actually it's not in four. the top five. Wow. Serious? We are. Oh. Okay. By these pe- by these trivia. So yeah, the third? Yeah. What what do they what? know? Third? <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's what this answer says. Wow. And if that is wrong, I would encourage you to also write a strongly let worded letter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so does it say who's first and second? No, it really just gives me the Russia. answers. But pro- I would I say bet. China is probably up there. Okay. And somebody else is second. <laughs> <laughs> Russia. I, why, I heard yesterday that Russia is almost double the size of the United States, like for the continental United States. Mm. Oh. So Let's that see. would make sense if Let's, they were up oh. in the top. Right. Two. It's really weird. Sorry, my little, my teacher soapbox here. I'm going to mm. pull that out. So it is. It's um, troubling the way that they create maps, mm. world maps and U.S. maps, because Preach. none of it is really helpful, you know, mm. because then we look at it, like I was saying earlier, Alaska is this little bloop, when really it's <laughs> the biggest. And then world maps, they shrink it all down and adjust it a little bit so that it can fit on a paper, but it's mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. accurate. Well, mm. Never I blame that. education. <laughs> <laughs> well, change the world, Amanda. What are we going to do? Change, change the world! <laughs> uh, thank you all for listening to that last I, episode. Yeah, I wasn't here for it, but I heard it. <laughs> okay, we'll go with this last question, and we'll see how you guys do. Maybe it's easy, maybe it's not. How many U.S. states begin with the letter P? Your time starts now. Uh, three. One? I don't know. No, and yes. Pennsylvania, right? There's only one. Mm-hmm. I think so. There's only I'm one. Because like, <laughs> I, I just keep doing the That's one. all I could come up with, but I felt like I was missing some. Yeah. yeah. Pennsylvania. That's it. Mm-hmm. Right? That's correct. Fantastic. I, I'm so <laughs> proud of all you guys. <laughs> we did it. You high guys did it. all around. We did it. Did it. Mm-hmm. Woo. Do. We're yeah, giving high we fives. Did. Power. <laughs> To the people (laughs) who are changing the world. (laughs) Sounds like we need prayer. (laughs) How is that? We always end fancies that way. I know. I I was just thinking that. I'm like, Sherry always says that. (laughs) Because it is true. Yeah, it is true. Well, because I know for me, I always need prayer. (laughs) Well, you know, let's do that. (laughs) Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for the United States. Thank you for (laughs) geography. Thank you for all of these things. And thank you for the teachers that help us and correct us, Lord. Uh, And thank you for those that wrote that. (laughs) We're just joking. We're going to send a letter. It was all fun. Good job. (laughs) Lord, we just thank you and praise you for today. And we thank you for the word that you've given to Jamie. We... um, pray that this word seeps deep into our hearts and our minds, um, gives us a little gem of what it is you would like to teach us today. And Lord, we just pray blessing and favor and healing on our listeners today. I don't know why, but I just feel like there's something that that you are working on in healing in us and our listeners, Father. So right now we just thank you and praise you for the healing touch that you have upon our lives. And we thank you for today in Jesus name. Amen. 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 All right. So I'm going to be sharing this morning about dwelling in the presence of God. And, um, I recently read this passage of scripture again and felt led to, to dive into it, which was kind of funny because I'm like, we've talked about this. I think, I think twice we've <laughs> talked on like this uh, subject matter specifically um, on the podcast, but you know what? We're going to do it again. Because <laughs> <laughs> we can't get that enough, really. We the can't. subject is so important. So uh, it's the story um, we're going to read in First Samuel chapter 3 all of it. So prepare yourselves. It's really good though. I can't, I can't really narrow it down to like little portions because I think the whole story is great. And it's honestly, it's one of my favorite passages in scripture. I just, I remember when I like read this for for the first time as a young girl in my little children's Bible, 
And I'm like, that's such a cool story about God speaking to Samuel in the middle of the night. I'm like, that's just so neat. (laughs) Um, And every time I read it, I just get something different out of it. And um, it was interesting this time around because I, again, got something different out of it. And I was seeing it, I've I've seen it before from like Samuel's perspective, but um, I was reading it and as we read it this this, I was going to say this morning, but today, as we read it today, um, I would like you to think about it from Eli's point of view mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. what, um, what he may have been thinking and experiencing and, um, yeah, what, what was this like from his perspective? Um, so I'll kind of set the scene a little bit. Um, so we've talked about Samuel before he was a, kind of a miracle child for his mom, she had prayed to conceive him mm-hmm. uh, in at the tabernacle, uh, and Eli, the priest, <laughs> thought she was drunk mm-hmm. because he couldn't right. hear her words but could see her mouth moving. And uh, she basically made a promise to God that if he would allow her to conceive a child, that she would mm-hmm. dedicate him to the Lord. And so Eli was like, okay, may the Lord just grant you your prayer. And he did. And so, um, so after Samuel, after baby Samuel was weaned, he was brought back to Eli to care for, which also kind of cracks me up. (laughs) Right. Right. (laughs) Just. Yeah, and anyway, it's like, well, thanks. God answered my prayer and, and now he's yours. And Eli's like, oh, okay. <laughs> thanks thanks, thanks, what thanks you were for mumbling. the extra child. <laughs> um, that's just my perspective. It's funny. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of our backstory. And so let's go ahead and read First Samuel chapter 3. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down again. The Lord called Samuel and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am. You called me my son. Eli said, I did not call, go back and lie down. Now, Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time, the Lord called Samuel and Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am. You called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. Mm. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down. And if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, see, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears about it tingle. Mm. At that time, I will carry out against Eli everything I spoke against his family from beginning to end. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about his sons. Okay, wait, wait, wait. For Mm -hmm. I will... For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. His Mm -hmm. sons blasphemed God, and he failed to restrain them. Therefore, I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering. Mm -hmm. Samuel lay down until morning and then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He was afraid to tell Eli the vision. But Eli called him and said, Samuel, my son. Samuel answered, here I am. What was it he said to you? Eli asked, do not hide it from me. May God deal with you, be it ever so severely, if you hide from me anything Mm -hmm. he told you. So Samuel told him everything, hiding nothing from him. Then Eli said, he is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. The Lord Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, and he let none of Samuel's words 
words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba recognized that Samuel was attested as a prophet of the Lord. Mm. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh, and there he revealed himself to Samuel through his word. And Samuel's word came to all Israel. Oh, so good. I know. I love it. So good. All right. So, um, I said, let's think about Eli's perspective Mm -hmm. as we read this. So, Mm -hmm. um, did you ladies do that? Did anything kind of, I don't know. What, what did, what did you notice or think about? I mean, I just, oh, sorry. I just (laughs) think it's kind of interesting. Like, um, as a parent, sometimes, I mean, just as a parent being in that position where you're like, that wasn't me. (laughs) And the kid keeps coming back. Nope. That wasn't me. Please go to bed. Nope. That wasn't me. And then, but for it to be, there was probably that light bulb moment yep. where Eli yep. was like, oh, yep, okay, that that wasn't me, but I do know who that is. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. I, I just that full circle of that wasn't me, go answer and listen to what the Lord has for you. Um, and then I wonder if Eli was like, hmm, I wonder if that's going to be about me. You know, that, hmm, I wonder if God's going to give you a word about me, and I just sent you to go receive it. I don't know. I just think that's kind of mm-hmm. interesting. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what I was going to say is, as a parent and now as a grandparent, I'm like, no, 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 go ahead. You know. Mm-hmm. But then it's that teaching moment when, when you do, it's that aha, uh-huh, it's that, oh, oh, I know what's happening now. Okay, now this time, when this happens or you hear this again, do this or say this. And it's that teaching moment and the pride, you know, just how proud I'm sure he was to know that he was receiving from the Lord. And then for me, it'd be the excitement of kind of like what you're saying is the, oh my goodness, I wonder, I wonder what he's saying to him. And I wonder what's going to come of this. And then me just the mom side is just, Lord, I can't wait to see how this blooms and and what's going to be of this. And that that's what I got out of that. I almost saw it as like the excitement side of, of Eli, of like <clears throat> maybe when he first got to hear the Lord for the first time. Oh, and now yep. he's like, when it finally clicks, he's like, oh, I could see him sitting there on his bed as a little old man. <laughs> <with this. laughs> And like getting so excited, I'm like, okay, I'm I'm waiting to see what happens. Like mm. if he comes back and tells me what the Lord has said, and just like the excitement of, oh, this is now his first time getting to talk yeah. with the Lord because at the beginning it said Samuel had never known, and so for oh, almost right. Eli to be like, oh, mm-hmm. it's his time, mm-hmm. and so yeah, just the excitement. Um, I kind of saw it in a different light, to be honest. Um, it said at the first part of the chapter that the visions were rare and mm. they didn't hear the voice of the Lord. Mm. And I, you guys might have to correct me about this, but I think the Lord had already told Eli what was going to happen to his family. Mm, he did. You can read that in chapter two. Yes. <laughs> and so he was not stewarding the voice of the Lord. Mm. And so why would God talk to Eli if he's not going to steward it well, right. because he's letting his sons oh, run amok, right, right, he's right. Yeah. not protecting yeah. the presence. And so I, I kind of see Eli as like, Oh, like this, it would, that would have uh-huh. smarted. Like it would have been not oh. a great thing because Ooh. he's like, I could have had that, but okay. he decided not to, he chose mm-hmm. not mm-hmm. to listen to the voice of the Lord. And I'm thinking also he had a, an opportunity for repentance and to get his sons in line or say, mm-hmm. you're not serving in the temple. Mm-hmm. And he didn't do it. Wow. And so this could have also been a turning point, And he decided not to take this opportunity either. Oh. So it's kind of sad to me. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. So um, I was thinking about the proximity, mm. like the physical mm. proximity oh. of where everybody was located. So Samuel joins this family and it's always just been fun to think about. He just, he just set up his bed where there was a space for it. And that happened to be in the tabernacle next to the ark 
of God. <laughs> and, but it says that Eli was lying down in his usual place. So we yeah. don't know where that is, right. but I can imagine that Samuel must have been in between or yeah. yeah. So I somewhere because Samuel could hear mm. the voice of the Lord and mm-hmm. could have heard Eli and he mm-hmm. thought it was Eli, but Eli mm-hmm. must have been further away because he didn't hear it. Okay. Mm. But I, here's the thing. Like Eli could have, and I think when he, when Eli made the connection that this was God, it says that he went back to bed. Like, where did I see this? He, uh, so Samuel went yeah. and lay down in his place. That's in verse nine. Yes. So Eli told Samuel, go lay down if he's set. Da, 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 da. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Okay. So I guess this was just my imagination. Like, so he, he tells Samuel to go back and wait and listen. But Eli didn't get up no. like no. he, he could have, okay. he knew at this point that God was speaking Yeah, and he didn't move. He didn't make an attempt to like eavesdrop. Hmm. Oh, right. Right. Or right. teach or teach like Pastor Sherry right. was saying. He didn't have the opportunity to like have a teaching moment with Samuel either. Right. Mm-hmm. right. Well, I, and again, please, please correct me. But I feel like a part, mm, I don't know if the Lord is speaking to me and, and sometimes the Lord is speaking audibly for sure. But then sometimes, I mean, have you ever been in a spot or, you know, worship is so wonderful or, or whatever you're, you feel like you're being fully encompassed, right? The presence of the Lord is there and he's speaking to me or he's speaking to you, but I have no idea what he's saying to you. Mm -hmm. And so I think, I think Eli knew, you know, after the second time, if you have kids after the second time, you're like, yep, that's not me. That's not me. (laughs) You know, there is some, something else going on here. So Eli had to have known that it was the Lord. But I think he also knew that word wasn't for him. So even if he got up and was like, (laughs) you know, let me know. Yeah, Yeah, maybe he couldn't have heard if he wanted to. The Lord would have closed his ears. Right, right. Right. Well, and especially because of of what Nicole was just saying, maybe Mm -hmm. too. No, that's so true. Like what what I see about Eli, not just here, but kind of before and after too, is that he's pretty passive. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So... Uh, You know, we've talked about before how he blessed Samuel's mom, Mm -hmm. just like, okay, well, he didn't, he didn't pray for her. Mm -hmm. He didn't ask what she was praying about. He just, he knew she was deep in prayer and he just said, well, God, well, God Mm -hmm. will bless you with what you've asked. And that was it Mm -hmm. for him. It was just like, I'm doing my job, my priestly duty. Right. Um, And then we see in chapter two, I'm not going to read it, but I encourage you all to read Mm -hmm. about what his sons were up to. Yeah. And like they're they're taking care of the sacrifices that the people are mm-hmm. bringing in and they're basically making their mm-hmm. orders for how they like their right. steak done. Yeah. Uh, right. Good point. That's a good word right there. Yes. A, a, <laughs> yes. They are not serving God. They are serving themselves. Yep. They are yep. sleeping with the ladies that are tending to the temple. They just have no concern yeah. about the things of God. They are just thinking about themselves. And Samuel, right. or sorry, and Eli, as their father, is does not seem to be speaking over them. Mm-hmm. Because in uh, what God spoke to Samuel is that he he didn't correct them. He, mm-hmm. or right. it didn't even attempt to. Right. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so I see this in mind when I'm imagining that Samuel set up his little sleeping bag, you know, into in <laughs> right next to the ark. That's a spot that Eli could have had mm. if he had right. dared. He and maybe it. he had, you know, right. cause we've, I, last time I shared, I was talking about the, the tabernacle and mm-hmm. how it was set up and everything's very holy and, and, Really, Samuel probably shouldn't have been there because that was a right. place where, <laughs> right. where the right. only the priest could go in once a year. <laughs> right. And but Samuel didn't know that. <laughs> Eli didn't correct him. <laughs> right. And and Samuel just unknowingly made his bed right next to the presence of God. 
and was allowed to. Yeah, he, he dared to. Right. He, I mean, he didn't know any right. any reason not to. Right. But God didn't punish him for that. He actually blessed him. And I just imagine that, you know, without knowing, Samuel is just growing up, you know, day after day, night after yeah. night, just really absorbing mm-hmm. the presence of God. Uh, right. That just amazes me. But Eli could have had that right. as well, that closeness. Right. Well, I love how you said, I mean, he's camped out there and he's absorbing the presence of the Lord before he ever heard his voice. Mm-hmm. Because it, until this point, you know, because he hadn't, he he couldn't discern whether it was Eli, right, or right. the Lord, but right. which he tells me he was it. hearing something audibly. Right, mm-hmm. right. I think it was an audible voice. Right, yeah. but uh, yeah, who who knows? Right, uh, it just it is, it's a great story. But um, so let me sorry read through my notes here. So he. Eli becomes aware that God is speaking to Samuel, but he stays in bed. Uh, He expected that God would speak to Samuel, but he didn't get up. He didn't move. He didn't attempt to eavesdrop. He was so close to the presence of God, but missed an encounter Mm. with Mm. him. Mm -hmm. Eli Mm -hmm. asked Samuel the next day what God said, Mm. and he's so passive in his response. (laughs) Sorry, Eli. Like, this is just what I'm seeing. He's so passive. He says, he is the Lord. Let him do what is good in his eyes. There's, I don't see any sorrow, grief, or willingness to change right. anything. He just decides, well, God's made up his mind, so let him do what is right in his eyes. Mm. So he had, you know, he still lived, I believe he lived in the t- the tabernacle of God, yeah. but had a distant relationship with God. Gosh, that's good. I also find it interesting. Yeah. I, don't, I I could have gone so many places with this. I, I actually wrote a lot that I ended up deleting because I'm like, mm, this is this isn't the message for now. But it's just interesting. <laughs> it's interesting to me. Um, in verse one, it says, um, uh, "In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions." In the very next verse, one night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, mm. so there were not many visions. Eli mm-hmm. can't see. He, I, I I see that's a physical right. manifestation mm-hmm. of what was really going on on a spiritual level. Exactly. Wow, I, I don't think yep. the how that is laid out is coincidental. <laughs> right. Yeah. He he. I just I I just feel deep in my spirit. He he could have had that, but things were just weak, getting weaker, and yeah. It do, I don't see that he made any attempts to to get stronger, and so. Um, so Samuel was in the position between God and Eli. Mm -hmm. He could hear both of them, but Eli was far enough away from God that he couldn't hear him. Mm -hmm. Maybe he didn't want to hear what he knew God would say. Yeah. Oh, right. Right. Because God actually already, already spoke that word. Right. Uh, I think it was you, Amanda, just maybe, maybe he, uh, (laughs) kind of knew that that was about him. And didn't want to hear it anymore. Yeah. Um, but here yeah. is kind of the beginning of Samuel's uh, position mm-hmm. with God. That's true. He continues to have a position between people and God throughout his life. Mm-hmm. And he was a prophet. Right. And so be- before Jesus came, this was how God was with the people. He spoke through the prophets, right? right. And so this is Samuel's kind of induction into that calling. Yeah. But even with Eli, he's literally in that place between God and man. Right. <laughs> and then and then and then Eli said, Tell me what he said. That's just like the, the like people saying to godly people, what is God saying? Instead of going after right. God right. themselves, so, mm-hmm. just wanting to hear, Well, I, I don't I don't have the time right. to be as close mm-hmm. to God as you are. You're closer. Just tell right. me what he said. Right. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Samuel grows. Uh, we ended in, in, uh, in chapter three about how he, he began to just yeah. have this place, um, where his word came to all of Israel. Yeah. Um, so he became an advisor to King Saul. 
he actually kind of found King Saul and he found David. He anointed David for uh, becoming the next king after Saul. Uh, it became an advisor to, to both of those men. Mm-hmm. Essentially, Samuel was God's voice to the leaders of Israel and to the entire nation in turn. Even after his death, even after Samuel died, uh, he was called upon by King Saul and spoken to through divination to advise him. So I want to look at that. Uh, 1 Samuel 28, 15. This is, we're hearing from Samuel from beyond the grave at this point. It's a um, very ungood thing. I'm sorry. It's, yeah, it's, I'm not saying this is right, but even still, sorry, I'm like shaking. Yeah. I can't even turn my pages. <laughs> okay, 1 Samuel 28, 15. So he, um, even after death, is still in this position of telling the people what God is saying. Um, <laughs> bad form, sorry. Bad form. <laughs> so Samuel said to Saul, why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? <laughs> Could you see God go sleeping? Uh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was resting in peace. Why have you disturbed me? And I am in great distress, Saul said. The Philistines are fighting against me, and God has departed from me. He no longer answers me, either by prophets or by dreams. So I've called on you to tell me what to do. Oh, God. <laughs> Sorry. So even okay. even after death, this is this is Samuel's position. He, yeah. it, it, the, you know, King Saul is depending on a word from the Lord, and he knows God isn't speaking to me anymore. Mm-hmm. But I need him to. I'm gonna find the guy who knows him and talk to him. <laughs> right. right, wrong, or indifferent. This is this is this is it. And I'm through this. I'm getting a picture of humanity today. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. right? right. That, you know, we, we've yeah. heard you're as close to God as you want to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I completely believe that is true for, for Christians and non-Christians. Yeah. yeah. That we have the opportunity to set up our sleeping bag <laughs> <laughs> in the presence of God. Right. And allow, and, and allow him to just speak to us and we can absorb who he is and just yeah. be, be so close to him. Or we could be in the next room, mm-hmm. or we can be in the next town. Yeah. We, you know, you know what I mean. We can just distance ourselves, mm-hmm. and then when we need a word from the from the Lord, <laughs> right? We can either just be upset that He's not speaking, or we can go talk to somebody that's closer to God than we are. But that's not the position that we need to be in. Like we right. have the opportunity to get to know Him for ourselves and have mm-hmm. Him speak to us mm-hmm. Himself one on one individually. Well, and the way you read that, I am in great distress. You, you know, just the way you read that, it, it's almost like a two-year-old throwing a fit. <laughs> right. Yeah. It, it is. And he's like, well, he's not even listening to me anymore, so you go do it. And it's So not only is he not doing it, but he's doing it with attitude, not doing it. Mm-hmm. Right? It almost in a blaming. Well, he's not even listening. He's not even, he no longer answers me. Mm-hmm. You know, and so. <laughs> like it's God's problem. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, God did right. depart. He did. So it's like, well, <laughs> it did. That's still your problem too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. It's just like Eli too. Like yeah. I was saying, he could have humbled himself mm. and repented. Yeah. Saul could have humbled himself and repented, and he could have had that availability, but he didn't. Right. And it, it also struck me too <clears throat> when you're talking about Eli and his sons. Like he, Eli, like screwed up his whole family lineage because yeah. of that one decision not to discipline his kids. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so like their whole lineage is Generation in trouble Christ. because of right. that. Like it's not, it's not a good prophecy. Like, right. It's, well, it's and you really can not read more about that in, yeah. in chapter two, the one right before we read all of, um, basically all of that chapter is, is about, yeah. you know, Eli and his sons mm-hmm. and this prophet that spoke to him and said that God was going to take yeah. that calling. He says, uh, yeah, I, I said, I was going to bless your family because you're a family of priests, but I, I'm, I have, mm-hmm. I reserve the right to take that away yeah. in this mm-hmm. case. And, right. And that's the right. thing that, and that's, that's the justice of God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He, I mean, he gave an a, a opportunity for change, but he's like, I'm not going to put up with priests that are not for me. Yeah. And, and I just, I was thinking as I'm just thinking about all of this stuff that, you know, it's in, uh, in Job, God gives and he takes away. Yeah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Yeah. He gave that calling to that family of priests, but he can take it away as mm-hmm. well. But right. his name is blessed. And yes. so that's why he reserves the right to, to take that back. Yes. If, if mm-hmm. things aren't like he, he laid it out. He made, he made the rules. He made, mm-hmm. he made what he wanted clear. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, this is a, a, a two party situation. Right. Right. Um, and so, yeah, God, God can, yeah. <laughs> he can have his way with that. But mm-hmm. if he hadn't have, if God hadn't have intervened and changed things, mm-hmm. where would we be today? Right. Yeah. Right. But I also wonder, yeah, what, how would this entire story have been different if Eli had taken the opportunity to mm-hmm. repent yeah. and to be close to God and to actually hear God for himself instead of needing to right. hear through another person? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, and you're talking about proximity and the whole time I'll, like, I just keep thinking about dirt <laughs> and I think, like, <laughs> tell us more. Right. right. <laughs> Elaborate, please. Um, no, I <laughs> kind of thinking of it as like this little garden, right? So this garden that Eli has. So please try to, Lord help me, um, try, try to track here. So it's like Eli and his family are in this, this little garden, right? But Samuel was also planted in that mm, garden yes. and it isn't the dirt. Mm. Like it's oh, not, right, right, it's right. not right. The <laughs> nourishment in the dirt. Right. Mm. So it's, so Eli and right. Eli's kids are my words, hot mess express, right? The but they're lions. all right. They're, oh. they're the weeds in this dirt, <laughs> they right? They look like and, good flowers, but they're really just weeds. Right. Yeah. And they've all come from right. this dirt, but Samuel was also planted in this dirt Mm -hmm. because of his mother and right. And she said, I'll, you know, I'm I'm giving him back. And so I just, I keep, I just keep thinking, you know, Samuel could have been put anywhere with any family, right. But he was planted there with Eli and with his family. And the Lord's like, look, it's not the dirt, Mm -hmm. right. I'm going to put Samuel here and he's going to hear from me. Mm -hmm. It's not, it's, it's not me. It's you. Right. Right. (laughs) You know, I, and I don't know if that makes any sense, but it's like mm-hmm. the the curses that are on Eli and on his family. Yeah. Samuel is is in the same arena, right? He's in the same proximity, mm-hmm. but it's not. It wasn't a curse that was planted mm-hmm. on Samuel, right? It was this other other mm-hmm. family, right? But, mm-hmm. Right. Well, that, I think that came down to the position of his heart too, right? And God could see that, like, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> right. Well, and I kind of see this. I mean, couldn't this have been Eli's second chance? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And and to me, I don't know. I was trying to see it as his second chance, and you know, be proud in that. But yeah, without the without the repentance and everything, he's still going to be the same Eli. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I I think about. In in how 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 do we relate with this? What yeah. what what do we do with this? And so, I I just encourage everyone continually <laughs> think about where you are. Think about where you've made your dwelling place. Mm-hmm. Can you hear or see God at work in your life right now? If not, move closer. Yeah. Don't be afraid of the change He will bring. We can't love our lives so much that we would choose our current circumstances and preferences over his presence. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can, (laughs) but it's not a good choice. It's not worth it. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Right. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think there's times where people feel let down by God. And so they don't want to draw near because he let me down. He, he didn't, move in the way that I expected him to. Right. He didn't save my family member. Right. There's still death and cancer and war and evil. And God's not doing what I think he should do about it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to step away. Mm -hmm. That I I hear that from people. I see that from people. Mm-hmm. And and we can choose each and every day. We can choose to yes. take that step closer or further away based mm-hmm. off of how we feel God is serving us at that time right. and it, how happy we are with him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. But 
We must allow God's word to challenge us to change, to grow closer, and to press him for details. Mm. Like, I think Eli could have done that. Mm -hmm. And if we disagree with what he says, are we going to allow that wedge to separate us? Like I said, if, if God has let you down, is that enough for you to be like, I've, I've, I've done enough. I'm not pleased with the way this is going. I'm out. Is that that wedge, you know, that separation from God or, or are you going to press in and going to ask why? And if he doesn't answer the way you want, are you still going to trust him? Are you still going to seek him? Are you still going to want to keep your sleeping bag up against his presence? Yeah. We have that choice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which brings me to my last scripture. It's kind of unrelated, but I, <laughs> I'm going to say it anyway. So it's from Daniel chapter three, verses 16 through 18. And uh, this is the story about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Mm -hmm. And I love, I love this because they were about to lose their lives for not um, worshiping an idol. Mm -hmm. And they were expecting God to move on their behalf and hoping that he would save them. Yeah. But they didn't know how it was going to go. They, we know the end of the story. They didn't know the end of the <laughs> right. story. Okay. So I'm just going to read this. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we, are, we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know your majesty that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you've set up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So uh, he is able and we yeah, believe mm -hmm. he will. Yeah. But if he doesn't, I'm, I'm all in for him mm -hmm. and not for you. I, I, I will die on this hill. <laughs> right. <laughs> Literally or figuratively. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He gives and takes away. Yes. Uh, so even if God doesn't move in the way we would like, I am willing to follow him and trust him. That's, mm -hmm. that's what they were saying. And yes, he did move and he did save them. Yes. But their hearts were that even if he doesn't, mm -hmm. I want you to know, little right. king, <laughs> you're the little king. He's the big king. <laughs> right. Yes. So I just want to, I guess, challenge everybody to just continually, not just today, but tomorrow and next week. And when you get bad news and when you get good news, mm -hmm. where, where am I at? And where's my proximity to the Lord? Mm -hmm. And am I as close to him as, as I want to be? Do I want to be closer? Am I willing to take that step? Am I willing to maybe ask him about the things that hurt me and see what he has to say? Thank you for listening to the She Is podcast by Refuge City Church. We pray that you have been encouraged and equipped in knowing who you are in Christ. If you are wanting to have a personal relationship with Jesus, pray this with me. Dear Jesus, I know that you love me. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Please come into my heart to stay and help me to hear your voice and grow in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep in touch between podcasts by finding us on Facebook and Instagram. The links are in the show notes. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to this podcast to hear more from us every week about who you are in Christ.